Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I'll spend my money up right down to my last time. Go, ho, ho, and Baton Rouge. All right, so I'm here today with Trey Heyman, who is the winningest captain in the spring wiffle ball tournament history. Trey, what does that title mean to you? Um, it means a lot, you know. Um, I feel like I've always put in a lot of hard work during the off-season off to get to the place where I can be a captain. And uh, uh, I guess when we start playing, the hard work the hard work does show because, you know, I've, I've won it twice and nobody else has. All right, so this year will be the first year that you've went into the tournament not as the defending champion. So does this affect you in any way? I would definitely say yes but in a very positive way it makes makes me as a captain more hungry I guess uh, I guess you could say last year me and my team got complacent because uh, after after the rounds of uh, picking players were done and stuff I mean people looked at us as the best team there and uh, I guess we kind of knew it then uh, we got complacent out there so yes I would say going in this year not being a, the defending champion really it really puts a drive in us, and uh, it also puts a target on Mr. Cook's back, so, that, that, so that's going to help us out. Throughout the years, you have developed yourself from the star third baseman, who had never pitched at all, to the ace of your squad. How did you transform yourself as a player? Well, uh, I really have to thank two people for that. First of all, would be my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because, you know, he gave me the ability to go out there and spin the baseball. And second would be Wiffle Boy 28. I've spent countless hours not only outside and in the garage, you know, uh, throwing, working on new pitches, but watching his film and uh, learning from him. So um, I guess I guess after after the, the first year, you know, I had to come in there and pitch for one game at, at the end, and uh, I really didn't have that good of an outing. So I thought to myself, I was like, that's not going to ha happen again. Spent the whole off season working. Then that next year, we got there. Had to pitch, pitch the first game. I guess you could say it took care of business. Yeah, I definitely agree with that statement. All right, I got one more question for you. There's been a lot of talk that you blame last year's loss on Caleb Wigley, your hybrid position player. Do you have any comment on this? Well, I don't want to say blame. I don't like putting blame on any anyone else but myself. But uh. First, first off, the the hyper position is a very tough place place to play. I mean, you're you're not just a shortstop. You're not just a second base baseman. You like you play both both sides. You, and like you have to have a lot of hustle out, out there. You can't just stand stand around. And uh, I will say, through the first three and two thirds innings of, of that game, Caleb gave all he all he had. Uh, but then on that last play, we had two outs, and. Uh, that's that's when it separates men from the boys, and um, I guess you could say after the ball went o went over the wall when he had the chance to make that catch, that's when he went to the side of being a boy. So, well, that's a I'm gonna make sure he gets that word, but I just want to thank you for doing this interview here today with me. Thank you, sir.